What you're seeing right here is my search for blue light in churches stage. Why are there blue lights in so many churches? When we look in these churches today, this is not what you saw in the original church. So why the blue lights? When did blue lights even come into so-called fashion? And how did it get from the concerts and the arenas for stadiums and sports and things into the churches? This is something that just stands out to me as blaring. I want you to be able to see as soon as you see this in a church that you walk right out of that church because this is intentional. Someone intentionally did this. Just like with graphic design, I want to explain to you too. Graphic designers are trained in illuminist symbolism or Masonic symbolism, uses of symbols that secret societies have meanings for. Designers get trained in that, but they don't know that those symbols mean those things. So when you hire a graphic designer, just like if you hire a stage lighting person, they might be just doing what they've been trained for or what the trend is. So I want to make that clear right up front. When I say this is intentional, I mean the ones that run the world have put these into the schools, into the fashion, into the trends purposefully. It's not the people that actually did the lighting. Potentially could be, but chances are it's more just the bigger picture that the people that are running the puppet show. Unfortunately, the churches are puppet shows in this day and age. Most of them, of course, not all of them. There's very sincere, warm-lit, normal churches that just are very stripped down and gospel-focused. But these churches, too, they claim to be gospel-focused, but... What are we getting from the blue light? See, it's always the symbolism. It's what it does to the mind. It's what it does to the hormones. It's what it does to the brain. It's the subtle things. Just That's why they use certain symbols in graphic design because subliminally those messages, those um, symbols are giving messages and meanings. So it's beyond subliminal now. It's very blatant where we are, but just that's how these things work. And it's the same with blue lights. So the first thing I search for is blue light in churches just to show an idea of what this looks like. So one of the first things I want to look at then is the science. This is why these choices are made ultimately because there is a biotech purpose for it. The biotech purpose is suppression of melatonin in humans, particularly melatonin released by the pineal gland. When we see this, we and we will see it in another slide, this attention to the pineal gland through blue light of the moon, which also has its psychological effects on people, but the pineal gland also being related to other gods, what we know as the blue gods. So let's look first. The blue light from light-emitting diodes elicits a dose-dependent suppression of melatonin. Melatonin, it's a hormone that affects our ability to know it's night and to sleep. It can cause sleep loss. Interestingly, this was studied in NASA, which do a lot of mind control work, a lot of mind control studies. This is unclassified from our U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency. I've gone through this. This was 1971. The U.S. Army and the Office of Surgeon General were looking to find out what they were saying, what the USSR was or Russia was doing with mind control. So they did this whole document on various forms of mind control. And one of the things they studied was the effect of light. So I'm going to go in this here. They did hypnosis, suggestion, propaganda, and mass media, which is what's happening now. This is a whole other sub. I mean, there's just so much to cover on this. But here, light and color is a means of altering human behavior. So there is research on color thresholds of lights and they go into what a red light does and how it affects circadian rhythm. So that these are things they already knew in the 70s that they had been doing experimentation on. A person in hypnosis is more likely to be in an alpha state. So sometimes these blue lights have a quieting effect or an effect that causes someone to go into an alpha state because it is preparing the person for the dream state. It's really complex psychologically how much is going on with something that a lot of people just see as just light. But light wasn't 
first introduced with blue color. It didn't have that. It was it had to be made that way. Light bulbs had originally an amber color. Blue light is part of what they were studying. Basically, it was a sedative, is what this paper says. This paper is linked onto my website. I could uh, give you a copy of this as well. So I just want to show you that there are those that, that a long time ago have already concluded long ago of how human behavior can be altered. And there are those in this world working for the satanic system that are led by the demonic powers and principalities that have brought these studies into manifestation in the world to alter human behavior. Because once they know the science and the psychology of it, the only reason in studying it was for warfare, and ultimately warfare is going to be against the Christian as the Antichrist system comes in. So the whole thing here back then was the devil preparing for the Antichrist arrival, his own arrival. It is important to know because we can't underestimate the devil's use of these types of things when they enter into the churches. So I just did a search, why are blue lights seen so frequently? Found a few things on Quora. This is uh, something that came up with a related question, and the Blue Man Group, really popular in the U.S. and some of the entertainment venues, you just wonder where did this idea even come from, and don't they always look like robotic machinery, machine man? This is a clue and a hint of the effect of the pineal gland, the pineal, again, affecting the melatonin, also, people bathed in moonlight, so you get kind of a bluish hue on your skin when you have the moonlight coming in. You see blue lit television shows, like if, you're, if you see someone watching TV from outside their house, there's a, either a blue glow in the window or an amber glow in the window, depending on what show they watch. So some shows have an amber light coming off of it, so that's going to be like the warm, family-friendly television show, and they'll, they'll put that lighting in on purpose. And then the cold lighting is going to be like police shows, so that's the, the cold blue light has a, a, what some of those darker shows, those mystery shows, and those shows about murder and those types of things, and some, some of the movies, the horror movies as well, they're going to be blue lit. So that's telling us something. Very, It's very obvious if you really just open your eyes and look and think about the shows with blue light have an evil concept and the warm ones have a warm concept, a loving concept or something related to everything working out in the end and those types of things. So I just pulled up this Reddit here because this is somebody asking about all of a sudden they're seeing blue street lights. And I just traveled city to city for about 15 days. I saw so many blue lights on light posts in cities that I've never seen before. Of course, they're in car headlights that people can put them in. And then there's lights that will, people will put a blue light, like a really blue light, not just a white light with a blue tone, but a blue light on their front porch. Some of the people chatting online said that has to do with uh, transgender prostitution. You've heard of the red light district. There's something about blue lights also. So this blue light, again, having to do with transgender, just like we saw with blue man group and these machine people tied in with that also is uh, Hindu gods and the blue color. Why avatars of Hindu gods are shown as having a blue color. This all has to do with blue lights in the churches. 100%. It is not coincidence. Uh, in Hinduism, it says gods like Lord Vishnu, Lord Krishna, Lord Ram, and Lord Shiva are shown as having blue or dusky skin. The color of the skin is shown as either blue or sometimes black. Hindu religion is full of symbolisms, and the blue color is also a symbol. So they are recognizing, yes, this is symbolic. This isn't just, I chose blue because it's pretty. It's They're saying something, so they understand the subtlety of symbolism. Most avatars of Hindu gods are also shown in blue color. And not just Hindu gods, you see many gods in blue color. Blue is the color of the infinite, they say. So this is the, when they say infinite, this is that infinity loop that you see. This is the prison, it's the lower heavens. This is not the living god, they even have it as lowercase. All Hindu gods are an attempt by the human mind to give form to the formless Brahman, see. The blue color symbolizes a measurable and all-pervading reality, formless Brahman. So that's their highest holiness. And it goes by many names. And 
it, my other videos, you'll see other names this goes by, but this is the Antichrist, ultimately, that is going to be introduced into the world by many names, depending on what area of the world people live in. The worship of all religions leading to the same God, that's what they've been planning, that everybody will be in agreement because they get to believe their own God, just like Freemasonry, and they're all leading to the one, and they're unifying in Lucifer, Satan. So that's where we're going to see the Antichrist. So this is what this blue is doing, and this blue light in the churches is helping with that. Why? Because it's affecting the pineal gland, which is unifying everyone in that same state of mind. So like I was saying, someone asked about the blue street lights. The answer was, the bulbs are bad, the city is working on changing them out, and it shows the article. Then another person says, yeah, there was an article in the journal about it. Apparently Duke got a bad batch of lights, and they delaminate and the color shifts to blue and purple. Bad batch of lights. Everyone gets the same news. These people were saying what they were programmed to say. They were answering it by what the news said. But as I'm driving around the last 15 days city to city, this is all the same case in every city. So let me know in the notes below if you're seeing blue lights. Just let me know where you're seeing them, even if you're seeing on people's houses. There's also the blue lights that people are seeing as orbs. So this is a Christian forum about this, these blue lights. Floating blue lights in my room. This is the same God. This is Lucifer, Satan, coming forth as a blue light. Since we're talking about this blue light and amber light, so amber is in the Bible. There is a reference to the manna having the appearance similar to amber. So it had a amber color. The manna was from heaven. There was amber in the vision that Ezekiel saw, the heavenly vision in Ezekiel 1 and Ezekiel 8, where he is looking at this vision of this holy likeness from his loins downward fire, fire having the appearance, the appearance of brightness and the color of amber. There's a warmth to the, the brightness. Even as Moses had a face like the sun, we even have the contrast that God gave us to see in the sky, the sun and the moon, what the difference is between both types of light and what effects they have. It's important to pay attention to that because he gave us those things as signs. So getting back to this floating blue light thing, I've seen this when my bloodline has been very occult. I had in my family line, Rosicrucian, I had Germanic, Nordic, so many things that were accepting of these types of supernatural abilities. As I pursued that in not having answers and not truly believing God, comes in this blue light. So a lot of people are having this experience because there's all these open doors through sin and people are inviting answers and they're wanting to talk to an angel or wanting to talk to an alien even. So the invitation happens at some time. And interestingly, this says it's the discussion in Pentecostal and Assemblies of God this is where a big part of this is happening. Um, again, this is a Christian forum here. These blue light churches are calling themselves gatekeepers or opening gates. They're opening gates for demons. They're calling in demons. They're inviting in demons through this worship as Antichrist. There's errors in there, but there's such a, feel, a strong feeling of signs and wonders and emotionalism and things they perceive to be as miracles, things they perceive to be as powerful spiritual experiences that people overlook the fact that it's not aligned with scripture and they just go with it. And so then they start to see these things appear and they think it's God and then they start to ask these questions. So this person was asking what happened and ultimately, thank goodness, this person realized they had rebuked a Ouija board in a church or somewhere that they were a few nights before. And so when they rebuked the Ouija board a few nights later, they saw this blue light. And here it is here. He's saying two days go by and there it was a blue oval light floating in my bedroom. The next night, a giant hunchback demon whom my wife saw, he did tons of research and found out when demons want to communicate and appear to you in an amicable way, they start by appearing as blue orbs. Why blue? Because blue is this color of this counterfeit. 
So he went and prayed around his entire house, walking to every room, casting out all demons in the name of Jesus. While he was casting them out, the spiritual oppression was so great at times, his eyes were tearing, and other times he could barely breathe. No exaggeration. I just talked to someone on the phone the other day. She had an experience with this type of church, and we, as we were talking about it, she's saying, well, I know now I can never go back. And as soon as she said that, this anxiety came up that was a, almost a stabbing heart palpitation. The Holy Spirit gives me ability to feel these spirits, the discernment of spirits. And I remember the same spirit. It's, it's your best friend and it is so loving. And as soon as you turn against it, it just tries to control you into loving it and to returning to it. Um, sometimes you have to have a lot of support and backup for that. These are high, high level demons that these churches are dealing with, these blue light churches. So he says things that could be a gateway to points of entry, horror movies, psychic readings, TV shows, demonic lyrics and music, any any music these days. And even a lot of the worship music, a lot of the worship music channels have the symbolism that we were talking about at the beginning of the video. That's a cult. It is purposeful and that symbol is coming through. And those channels are really, really popular. And that just shows that the Christians are completely blinded to the things that are deceiving them right in front of their face. So that's why this channel is here. It's to speak to some of these things. And every time I, I find the rare person that's like, oh, I'm so glad I found your channel. It's really hard to find this channel. It's really suppressed, but it's also not going to be popular because people love their popular teachers and their popular bands and the, the worship that they love. They don't care about the symbol on top of it, the sideways cross or the cross with a circle in the middle or some slanted triple cross. There's just all kinds of things. The, the double cross, the double where we got the phrase double crossing from when you double cross somebody. Perfect example of how we're just completely blind to these things and they're just all over anyway, so they're so normalized. He says, of course, Ouija board, the involvement in idol worship, Mary and Catholicism. I'm glad they mentioned that because this Mary worship, the Archdiocese of Vancouver, I just pulled this up as I was getting reminded of this thing to do. They're doing a blue light campaign. This is after COVID or during COVID. They call it what they call Advent and Christmas, which is not Jesus' birthday as we know. We're going to focus on blue light as a unifying theme. So this is again the, pine, the effect on the pineal suppression of the sense of self into a sonambulist walking dead no sense of self it's the socialist uh, theme and this is exactly what they're telling you that it is so they have a blue light on top of a serpent for this archdiocese our living hope this is another jesus it says blue is the color of the blessed virgin mary i wonder why that would be is it because it's the blue demon god uh, from every religion all across the world, just like the Hindu gods. Why is blue the... Did anyone ever ask, hey, Vatican, why is blue the color of Mary worship? Is it like weeping for Tammuz? It says it signifies trust and confidence in God, purity, virginity, innocence, and birth. It also expresses solidarity with those grieving loss, socialism and other hardships this Christmas due to just insert your particular cause, which is what Freemasons do. We're going to all come together for a cause because we're service-based and we love people. And then we do secret sin and uh, nobody is the wiser for it. It says, we encourage the faithful to obtain blue lights and let them shine from their homes as a symbol of hope and solidarity. So they're saying, we'd like you to put a blue light on your house. How many people know that that stands for transvestite prostitution? You're putting that stamp on your house. Again, this is all symbolic. This is the serpent tricking people into trying to do good, but they're not obedient to God. They're not doing the will of the Father as the Bible says. They're doing what the church says to do. So we have to know the word and do it and prove it, let our life prove it out and walk in that faith without seeing, without people telling us that we would never come to this by the Bible. If we just studied the word by the Holy Spirit and lived that way, we would never have a campaign. Okay, so we're about to go even deeper here. Welcome 
in the blue light, says the ascended masters. Who, the, who are the ascended masters? Well, we know that they are demons. This website is ascendedmastersworld.org. These demonic bloodlines, occult rituals that have opened their pineal gland, their third eye, at an early age that can be done through sexual sodomy. So these people are listening to spirits, and the spirits are saying, which are demons, the demons are saying, welcome in the blue light. I want you to welcome this in. We welcome you as you have joined us in our effort to unite the light workers on the earth. The light workers are those that are working for Lucifer. They think they are doing good. So when they start hearing these things, they certainly wouldn't think that they're demons talking to them. As a matter of fact, they don't believe in demons. They believe in aliens and they believe in these angels, which are, of course, are demons. So the, these demons say the blue light star system is the beginning of all our plans to unite all. This is all everything informed by Lucifer is coming in, streaming in through these people that are hearing demons instead of being able to hear the still small voice of the Holy Spirit by knowing the word, hearing the word and doing it, living it, living in obedience to Jesus Christ, allowing us to hear God. We decided that by using one light, which raises the frequency of each energy, we can unite the healing energies that are on earth at this time. If we can unite the energies, maybe then we can unite all light workers as well. So this is that same Vatican unity that we're seeing. This is coming from the so-called aliens. So we're hearing this from the demonic archdiocese, and we're hearing the exact same things from these demons. This is the message we bring from the blue light star system. Unite all light workers, and then unite everyone on this planet we call Earth. So the unity is going to be this love, like we saw in the archdiocese. It's about we're going to come together in love because of COVID and we're going to put a blue light on our porch and we're just going to unify in that so we can move further and bring this planet into a place wherein there can only be love and light. Who's love and light? A false love and light in this new control society. So I looked up blue light star seed. This is what I was saying before. A lot of people think they are aliens. Uh, it's a lot of people. You would be surprised if people have never heard. If you're watching, you've never heard of a blue ray or a star seed or someone that thinks they are an alien. There are many, 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 many thousands of people, if not thousands of thousands, at least across the world. There were victims of MK Ultra that started in Nazi Germany eugenics programs to create people just like this that were designed to be diviners and to call in these, you know, to be openers of portal, demonic portals, just like the ones running the churches. These people were programmed to do this. So these leaders are seen as very wise and powerful and and hearing from God, and they're just channeling things from demons. They're just writing, channeling books and publishing them through their churches. Have nothing to do with the scriptures. Most of what they say is against scripture. Um, so they're going on signs and wonders. They're going on emotional experiences. They're going on this um, demonic worship and these worship experiences. And they're targeting the young generations that want to see a move of God. And they want to see the church come alive, what they know of as God to be powerful, but they're not willing to slow down and understand what God says to do in order for that to happen. And they haven't been taught that, and they're, they don't have people speaking into their lives about that. Churches are afraid to say anything to people, and they we need to be speaking up about these things. So these people that fall in this category of seeing them as, quote, a blue ray are very sensitive, very empathic, very reserved and quiet, very shy often. This is all ways that they describe themselves. They have a desire for doing something big spiritually, and they feel a call. Often that call is programmed into them to do this antichrist um, leadership, where they become a thought leader, where they become a path paver for something of the New World Order. They just don't realize it's not of God, it's actually Antichrist. They're experience-based. They care about their own experiences and their own feelings. 
and their own emotions, and that's what rules them, not the perfect truth of the living God. So my prayer is after this presentation, just that when you see these lights in a church that you would think about them differently than maybe you did before. Maybe you would do more research and go into some of your own experiences of the past and really take another look of this, the doctrines uh, that go with these churches. And also maybe you'll be speaking to some of the ones that are doing the lighting and informing the lighting in your churches and speaking to the pastors about these setups, these stage setups, stage lighting, and informing them about these types of things too. And uh, will we take it seriously or not? People put a lot of money into these stage shows, stage lighting, and we have to love the truth at this point in history to the point that we will risk everything to correct ourselves. We will go for the big correction no matter how much it costs, no matter how much it takes, no matter how much money we lose or how many people leave the church or whatever it is, it's time to make that decision. It's time to make the, um, the major sacrifices of correction to come back and do his will because he's coming. He's not going to overlook these things. I keep finding these things as I am adding to this video, and this one is a blog from albertus-window.com, Blue Skin Gods and Demons. November 11th, 2015, this uh, artwork is a blue demon, and it's described as, it says, detail of a blue demon and snakes with another demon, tomb of the blue demons, necropolis of Tarquinia in Italy, 5th century BC. So you see the image here, and it's really faded, but you can see this uh, demon holding a snake, and another snake as well, and another uh, just like warfare going on in the sky. So the person is saying this is, this is a teacher, an uh, art teacher. Last week, my students and I were discussing the blue demons that are found in some Etruscan tombs. We were exploring two different reasons which might explain why these demons have blue skin. One theory is that the blue skin is a depiction of rotting human flesh. These demons are embodiments of death. A different yet also related theory is that the blue color relates to the skin discoloration which occurs when someone is bit by a deadly poisonous snake, specifically an adder. I found that was interesting too because either way, uh, the, uh, the Antichrist is the worship of death, the, the initial sin being falling into death and then the, all the way forward to the skull and crossbones that we see today is the worship of death. Uh, so you can see where blue would be a relationship to death and also a snake bite, which we're seeing as the mark of the beast, not literally a snake bite, but people call it a snake bite, that a puncture of the skin and a mark in their body that's permanent and changing, it's changing that person from life into death. And that's exactly what is happening with that. And once that person gets the mark, they have chosen eternal death. So it says, during this discussion, two different students mentioned that the blue skin reminded them of demons and religious figures found in other cultures. This is the Oni. It's an ogre or troll. It's a common figure in Japanese folklore. They have long horns, which makes them appear to be a combination of both beasts and humans. And this ties into my other video about the transformation of man into beast, which is the Antichrist agenda. The blue skin suggests that the figure is otherworldly, which by extension makes the figure seem more threatening. The creators of the film Avatar used blue skin for the same reason. They played with modern associations regarding skin color and race to make sure that moviegoers would perceive these figures not only as aliens, but as others, meaning otherworldly. This is an occult symbol that goes all the way back to every other uh, form of occultism, every other religion uh, uses this. It's a form of the swastika. You can see the swastika in it. But we see this circle and cross used now, today, in Christianity and in this Antichrist. So keep your eyes out for this symbol. You'll see it everywhere. You'll see it a lot in street architecture, in city scapes and um, areas with public fountains and public areas where there's statue and sometimes you'll see the obelisk in the middle. So if nothing that I've said so far rings true to you, 
making you believe that this is intentional, I want you to read with me the Scientific American article in, about blue lights. It says, lasers activate killer instinct in mice. Stimulating certain areas of the animal's brains can trigger predatory behaviors, including biting and grabbing. This is January 12th, 2017, right before COVID. Keep that in mind. Researchers have found a switch that seems to turn on a mouse's predatory instincts when certain parts of the rodent's brains were stimulated with light. Mice displayed a complex array of hunting activities. Researchers wanted to know whether the amygdala itself controls hunting behaviors. Interestingly, the amygdala, when damaged, it often leads somebody to become a psychopath. And so people that have psychopathic tendencies or even very strong narcissistic tendencies have a damaged or a misshapen or misformed amygdala. It says to activate the central amygdala in mice. A neurobiologist at Yale, of course, infected the mice with a virus that made the neurons in their brain sensitive to the blue light. So I just happened upon this article and it just really put the cherry on top of what it is that I want to get across. Everywhere that I go, I keep getting evidence to remind me to do these videos, to do this research, to get going on these things, even as much as is keeping me from it. For those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, though, it's not just the lighting. There's a lot of things we look for. But if we see those lights, we have to start asking a lot of questions. And that's going to take you doing your own specific research and you following through with the things that don't feel quite right. So stay on guard, stay vigilant, because the enemy is prowling around like a roaring lion. Do not let him devour you. I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.